What's up everybody, Morgan here, and today we're going to be discussing a subject that is near and dear to my heart that I think a lot of fly anglers don't understand that well, and that is fly lines. Specifically, we're going to be talking floating lines for trout. We're not going to go into sinking lines because that's a whole different can of worms, but how to select a good fly line for your next trout setup and how you can make an educated purchase and get a line in a product that you're going to be super happy with. The first decision you have to make when you're going and purchasing a fly line is the price point. And in my opinion, there's not much wiggle room there. There's not much debate. I would plan on just purchasing a high-end fly line. That's going to run you anywhere from around $75 to $130. Now, that seems like a sticker shock for fishing line for a lot of people, but here's why I think it's a smart decision. First and foremost, it's more economical to purchase those better fly lines. What'll happen when you get a cheaper line, say in the $40 fly, in the $40 range, is within about a year, honestly, it's gonna start to crack. And what's gonna happen is water's gonna go through those cracks and waterlog the actual core of the line. It's gonna stop shooting as well, and it's gonna start to sink. Within a year, you're gonna go buy another $40 fly line, and boom, you spent $80, when you could've just bought the better fly line, the more expensive one, in the first place. With a good high quality fly line, you should be able to get about five or six years of regular use out of it, not talking from a guiding standpoint, but just everyday anglers. Reason number two to buy a high-end fly line as opposed to a cheaper one is just the pure performance of that line. I have seen time and time again people with crappy fly lines struggling to cast because the line sucks. A really cheap fly line can make the world's greatest fly rod cast like crap. Likewise, a really good fly line can make a mediocre rod cast really well. I've seen it time and time again when I'm guiding clients and they're really insistent on using their own equipment. They'll be out with me and just really struggling to get a good cast out there. They're just fighting it all day and they think it's the rod. Oh, I need a better rod and all that. And eventually I find a way to sneak one of my setups in their hand. Immediately their casting gets better. It doesn't matter what price range of rod I put in their hands is because I'm really picky on my fly lines and the line makes all the difference. All of a sudden they're making those casts they couldn't make. And it's a really important factor in your setup. Generally when you're having issues on the river with your casting or fishing, it's not the rod, it's not you. A lot of times it can be the line. The next thing after you've determined uh, the price you wanna pay for a line, which like I said, you should just plan on getting a good one, um, is whether you want to go textured or non-textured. And to be completely honest, that's a lot of personal preference. What texturing is on a fly line is essentially little dimples on the surface of that line. And the theory behind it is it's going to cast better, shoot further because there's less friction on the rod guides going through your rod because there's less of the line making contact. It's just those little dimples. It also is going to float better on the water. In my opinion, it works, and I like the textured lines. Some people don't like them because they're noisy, and people complain also that after a lot of stripping, the line will actually cut their hands. I've never experienced that. Um, you must have really soft hands, some people. Like, that's, that's kind of a stretch, but okay. So it's a lot of personal preference. I like textured, some people don't. If you're spending 75 to $130, it's gonna be a pretty good line whether it's textured or not. So really just determine if that's a feature you like or don't. Now the final part and what I think is the most important and most misunderstood part of fly lines is the actual taper of the line itself. Now this is a whole big can of worms and there's a lot of things uh, to take into consideration here. The one error I see a lot of people make, having worked in a fly shop and spending a lot of time in fly shops, is somebody comes in to get a new rod and they're super stoked. They've done all the research on the new rod. They got a cool new reel that's all jewelry and decked out. Then it comes time to get the line and spool a line on it. And they just ask the guy behind the counter, well, what line do you like? And it's almost always, 
oh, I like uh, this trout taper or I like an MPX taper. And that's about where the discussion ends. Which is which, and then you make a split-second decision and buy one. That is not the right way to go about it. So hopefully this little uh, explanation on tapers will make it to where you can make an educated decision on the line you need for your fishing applications. So as an example of when taper and fly line taper made a huge difference was this last spring for me on the Bighorn River. Every year I go out there towards the end of March with my dad and a bunch of our buddies. We spend a week out fishing. And when we're doing it, it's a lot of nymph fishing just because there's not a whole lot of bug activity. We usually go out there, have a good time, and crush fish. Anyways, we had pulled up to this one bank and we had stopped for lunch and to like start a fire and do all that. And we were doing some wade fishing. And we had found that the fish were pretty far out in the river towards the middle on this little shelf that was out there. So we're out there and we're wading like up to our chest because it's, it's a ways out there. And we're making big long casts to get out to those fish. Now I'm out there and just whacking fish, just roping them in left and right. Meanwhile, my dad's up above me and he's not really getting a whole lot. We flip flop spots. I catch fish in the spot he was at. He's not catching fish where he's at. And I'm telling him, the fish are further out. The fish are further out. You need to get further out. And he just could not, for the life of him, get it further out. Now, my dad's a good caster. He's a good fisherman. So I was kind of surprised he wasn't able to get the cast. Finally, I was like, you know what? I'm going to let him use my rig and see if he can get out there. We swapped rods. He immediately starts bombing the casts out there, getting the drifts he needs, catching fish. Most people immediately think, Oh, well, he's got a better rod. Oh my gosh, the rod. Like, you know, it's the rod. It's not the rod, it's the fly line. My dad's immediate reaction was, oh my gosh, this line is making a world of difference. I have to get one of these. The line was absolutely imperative to getting our rigs out to those fish. In that particular situation, we were fishing nymphs and bobber rigs, and my dad had a scientific angler's MPX line on there. I was fishing the Orvis Hydros Nymph line. It was designed for throwing those rigs and it absolutely made a massive difference that day. So the question is, what is it about that line that made it so much better in that given situation? And that's what you need to have a better understanding of when you go to purchase your next fly line. The main thing you need to understand with tapers and fly lines is that mass moves mass. The first part of that comes with flies. If you're throwing big, giant, chunky flies, you generally want a line with a lot of mass. That's where you start to see those power tapers and the big nasty lines that are throwing meat, bro. Those lines are designed to throw big flies. They have the mass to turn those flies over and carry them and cast them. Whereas a super thin little dry fly taper line doesn't have the mass to move those flies. So with castability, you need to think about what type of flies you're gonna be throwing. That mass moves mass concept also comes into play with the line itself. And this is something a lot of people don't take into consideration. And there, there's two parts to this. The first part is mending. Let's say you're in that situation we were in on the Bighorn where we're throwing these bobber rigs and we're throwing them a ways out there, say 50 feet. If you have a super short, heavy tapered shooting line or power taper, you're gonna bomb that head out there and you're gonna have running line on the water, laying on the water. And then the head of your line going out to your bobber. Now when you're nymph fishing, a good mend is when you're able to mend to the bobber without moving the bobber. What you're gonna find when you try to mend that running line though is you're gonna mend that running line and the second that running line, the line that connects to the head, it's not gonna be able to pick that head up and mend it above the bobber. Basically, you're gonna get a mend for 20 feet and then you're gonna get a downstream bow. And the reason is that thin running line does not have enough mass to pick up and move the big head. So those power tapers, when you're mending at a different at a distance, aren't good options. You just simply can't mend a big heavy head with super thin running line. The other side of that is when it comes to roll casting, for example. If you have one of those power taper lines and you have, say, 20, 30 feet of line 
and the head is in the first 10 feet, like the bulk of the head, it's not gonna roll cast well because there's not enough mass in the D loop to turn over that heavy tip. So a lot of people will be say unhappy with an MPX taper because they're doing a lot of roll casting. Well, the guy at the fly shop said the MPX taper was great and it is for certain applications, but then they're frustrated with it because it doesn't roll cast. The reason it doesn't roll cast is their D loop is relatively thin line on that taper and they're trying to move a big heavy head. So if you're doing a lot of roll casting as well, you might wanna shy away from those power tapers. Now I wanna go over some different fly lines and how to read the taper chart that's on the back of the boxes. Um, with these, I'm gonna go over Scientific Angler's lines and some Orvis lines. Those just happen to be the companies that I use, that I like. I've used lines from all the manufacturers. Um, I have been a huge fan of SA and Orvis lines. They've been durable, I like their tapers, and I've had quality issues with other brands. So um, that's just what I'm gonna use for an example. Um, that being said, the information, how I show you what to look at on these charts will apply to all different companies. So the first line we're gonna go over is a line that I really like for certain situations. However, I think it's really overrated. Now, that being said, I have the line. I like it, we'll go over why I like it and what I use it for, but I think there's some misunderstandings with this line. And this line is the Scientific Angler's MPX line. Uh, you can see the line right here or somewhere on the screen wherever I put the diagram taper. Now, the reason I think this line has become so popular is it's a half line size heavier. So if you're buying, if you have a five weight rod it's and you buy a five weight MPX, it's actually like a five and a half weight line. Um, as fly rods have gotten faster and faster and faster, these lines have gotten more and more popular. And the reason being is there's not enough mass in a standard five weight line to really load the fly rod and bend the rod. So a lot of people are like, oh, I'm gonna go to a half line size heavier and I really like that. And now the rod casts well and I can, you know, throw big long casts and do all of that and I can feel the rod loading. The issue with that is you're not really taking into account all the other factors that the fly that go into a fly line. Like I was discussing earlier, you're mending, you're roll casting, you're kind of completely ignoring that and just only taking into account just standard overhead casting, which is an error. Now, you'll see on this line that its total head length before it hits the running line is about 35 feet. Now, what that tells me is if I am going to be making casts and mending past 35 feet, this is absolutely not the line for me. Like my dad on the bighorn, just absolutely not working, not getting it done, okay? You'll see that this line has a really thick front taper. That first 10 feet is really heavy. There's a lot of mass there. Now, what is that good for? That is excellent for throwing big bushy dry flies and streamers. It has the mass to turn those flies over. And the beautiful thing with this line is, guess what, when I'm throwing big bushy dry flies and streamers, I'm not really mending all that much. So it's a really good option for that. This is my go-to hopper line, it's awesome. It has the mass to turn over those hoppers, and with dry flies, I'm not really mending. So it's a good option for that. Now you'll also see with this line that after that front taper and you hit that belly and that shooting texture as they label it, um, it's a lot thinner than that head and that's where this line's not gonna roll cast well. You have a lot of mass in that first 10 feet. So when you go to make a roll cast, that 10 feet's gonna be sitting on the water in that thinner chunk in that is gonna be in the D loop. That thinner belly is in that D loop, which it's not gonna roll cast well. So if you're doing a lot of roll casting, this is not the line for you. It may be great that it goes in it and it does an overhead cast great, that's awesome, but then you're gonna be on the water and be really frustrated with the line if you're trying to mend it or roll cast it. It's not really designed to do that. So if you're having trouble casting your line, but you find your, because your rod's too fast of an action, but you also find yourself needing to roll cast and mend line, all I would say is simply buy one line size heavier of a different taper. 
buy a taper that is going to roll cast well and is going to mend well. And instead of getting the five weight, just get the six weight. You'll be much happier with it and there's nobody telling you you can't do it. So instead of just bumping up a half line size and getting a taper that's not really designed for the fishing you're doing, get the taper that's designed for the fishing you're doing and maybe bump it up a line size. That's where going to the shop and casting different lines and seeing how that one line size heavier feels on your rod is gonna be really beneficial. Now I wanna go over some trout tapers, okay? And these lines are, you can find this among all manufacturers. This is a pretty standard line to get out there. Now, these lines tend to have, as you can see, they're a quite longer head. They tend to have a really long head. Uh, for example, the uh, Orvis line is a 50 foot head, as opposed to that MPX is like 35 feet, right? So you start to get a lot longer of a head, mending at longer distances is now a lot easier, and you also start to get better roll casting ability because these lines aren't built with a massive front taper in that first couple feet. You start to get a lot more mass in that middle part of the line, and it's just moving a tiny, nice little delicate head, all of a sudden it roll casts really, really well, and you can mend it a further distance. Now the problem with this line is if you start trying to throw big flies and stuff, you're gonna struggle with that a little bit more. It's not gonna have as much mass to move those flies. Can you get over it? Yes, but it's not gonna be really great at that. The other thing with this line is since it has that nice, smooth, light, delicate front taper and an overall longer head, that mass is more evenly distributed, it's gonna land a lot softer on the water. That MPX with that big, heavy first 10 feet, it's gonna land really hard on the water. So with the MPX, if you were to be casting super small dry flies, little PMDs, little midges, things like that, it's gonna land really hard, possibly spooking fish. Whereas these trout lines are really, really good at throwing those small little dry flies. They land nice and delicate. You don't need the mass with those dry flies to be throwing that, um, and you can mend well. These trout lines, in my opinion, are some of the best all around options on there. So if you're the guy that's looking for just a one line setup. I really like these lines. And the reason I do is I personally fish a lot of smaller dry flies. So this line excels at that. Um, it also has a long head, like I said, so I can mend it really far away if I'm fishing a bobber rig. The area where it's only really lacking is if I'm fishing really big flies. And I can make a slight leader adjustment there and adjust my leader to get it to turn over well enough and I can get by with it. Whereas not being able to mend with say an MPX taper, that becomes a lot less of an all around line because that's a problem I can't overcome. I can't overcome the fact that it can't roll cast. So if I were to get one line, this is one I would really consider. I really like it, it's a good all around line. It'll throw those nice, it'll throw everything, everything you need. The next set of lines we're gonna go over are some of my favorites, and in my opinion, some of the most underutilized lines there is. Now, I am gonna preface this by saying these are fairly specialized lines. Um, so really, this is gonna be a line for a nymph rod setup, not a Euro nymph, like a bobber rig setup. And that is the Orvis Hydros nymph line and the Scientific Anglers and a draw line. These are really similar tapers. Now, these lines were des designed specifically for throwing bobber rigs, and do they do that well? They are phenomenal. Guiding, for the most part, I'm throwing a lot of bobber rigs, and these are my day in, day out, go-to lines. Now, when you look at the taper, this is the Orvis Hydros Nymph um, right here you'll see that they have massively long heads, way long heads. It's a 63 foot head. That means I can be mending line at 63 feet away. When I look at this too, you can also see that that line, the mass is fairly evenly distributed throughout that whole 63 feet. It doesn't have a big front chunk and then a skinny chunk. It's all pretty much even and then cuts off almost at the front. It's, you know, got a three foot front taper, super short front taper like that big. And then it's just a freaking rope for like 63 feet. Roll casts a mile. You can mend it at a mile away. It's an awesome line for that. I love it. Now, 
it's also a piece of rope. So it basically sucks at everything else. If you are throwing small dry flies, this is not the line for you. It lands so stinking hard, it's crazy. It is not a delicate line. It does not land softly. It slams down hard. One day I was out fishing with my buddy Johnny. We ran into a blue winged olive hatch. I only had one rod on me and it had that line and dude, it sucked. So um, it's a really specialized line, but let's say you're setting up a nymphing only rig or you're nymphing with bobbers 90% of the time. I would maybe look at this option as opposed to something else. You're gonna be able to mend it far, roll cast it far, and it chucks heavy bobber rigs like crazy. The other rod line I wanted to discuss is the SA Infinity line. And this line is also one much like the Trout Taper that I would really consider as a good all around option if you only have one line to go with. The main difference you're gonna see with this line as opposed to the Trout line is gonna be that front taper. You can see that front taper, that first 10 feet is still pretty thick and heavy as opposed to the trout taper that tapers down nice and slow and it's nice and light and delicate. But with the infinity, you'll see you still get that 50 foot head, so you still have lots of mending ability. You'll still see you have a lot of mass in that belly section, so roll casting's gonna be good. It's a really good option for all around use. If I were to be selecting and trying to decide between this line and the trout line, and I only had one rod, I would really look at what type of fishing I do the most. Um, do I tend to throw hoppers and streamers, or do I tend to throw small dry flies like PMDs, caddis, things like that? If I'm gonna be throwing a lot more smaller dry flies, I'm probably gonna lean towards that trout taper. Whereas if I'm gonna be throwing a lot of hoppers and streamers, I'm probably gonna go to that infinity taper. That's not to say the infinity taper can't still throw those nice, delicate little dry flies it can. It just might land a little bit harder. But both those are really good options. But just take into account what type of flies you're fishing the most. Both those are gonna be really good options. The SA Infinity is a pretty sweet line uh, and a good all around choice. Last lines I'm gonna talk about are those extreme power tapers. For example, the Orvis Power Pro Taper, uh, the Bank Shot, things like that. Now these rods are essentially like skagit fishing, like two-handed fishing, but on a single hander. They have a really short head, usually 30 feet or less, even shorter than that, yeah. And they have a ton of mass at the front end. Now, they're gonna shoot really well, you're gonna feel awesome because you're shooting all this line. But from a fishing standpoint, if you're doing any sort of delicate work at all with small dries, or if you're needing to mend at all, you're gonna hate this line's performance from a fishability standpoint. It'll cast far and cast well, but it's not gonna do great in the actual fishing standpoint. These lines are really good uh, for a specialized situation, just like that Nymph line for throwing big gnarly hoppers and big gnarly streamers on floating lines. That's what these are for. You can throw big giant flies, they have a lot of mass, you can move those big flies. Um, but as you can see, those heads are short and very little mass anywhere but the very first chunk. So if you're doing that type of stuff or you're specialized in throwing streamers on a floating line or throwing big hoppers, that's a good option for you. So hopefully an overview of those lines kind of gave you guys an idea of when I'm looking at those charts, what I'm looking at and how to make an educated decision on the next line you're gonna buy. Really look at how long the overall head length is. Shorter heads aren't gonna mend well at distance. They're not gonna mend at all. Um, but heavy heads at the front are gonna turn over big flies. They're gonna land harder though. Smaller, skinnier tapers are going to be nice and delicate, but they're not gonna have enough mass to move those big heavy flies. And look at the distribution of that mass in the head. Does it come down to a nice, long, skinny taper? more delicate work, it's gonna be good at that. If it's just a little bit of a belly and a giant chunk on the end, probably gonna be good for casting those big heavy flies. So, hopefully that helped and you guys have a little more education on how to select a fly line for your fishing applications. Please subscribe to the channel if you can. Like, share it, 
Instagram, post it, whatever. Any help I can get, I appreciate it. Thanks, guys.